shall say, in the last days, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And Jesus answered his disciples and said, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of woes and rumors of war. Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. from the Holy Land, the Voice of Prophecy presents In the Steps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening viewers and I would like to welcome you to the Voice of Prophecy presentation tonight. Tonight again I would like to welcome you to Jerusalem, to welcome you to the Holy Land. And I would like to welcome you to this special study because this special study deals particularly with the new Jerusalem city as compared to the old Jerusalem city. Behind me is a beautiful view of the old Jerusalem city. The Bible, however, says in Revelation 21, verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. John the Revelator saw the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. There is a very big difference between this old Jerusalem and the new Jerusalem that is coming. This old Jerusalem is made by human hands. But the new Jerusalem that is coming is made by divine hands. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared a place for you, I will come so that I can take you to where I am. And then you can be with me where I am. Jesus Christ has gone to prepare a place for each one of us. He has gone to prepare a new Jerusalem city that will be far much more glorious than this old Jerusalem. There, there are so many big differences between this city and the new Jerusalem that is coming. This old Jerusalem is filled with death, pain and sorrow. This old Jerusalem is filled with segregation. In this old Jerusalem, we have four major divisions. There is the Hebrew quarter, there is the Armenian quarter, there is the Muslim quarter, and the Christian quarter. Four major quarters. And they are marked divisions. And people of like nature habitate and cohabit together. The Armenians go in the one region. The Christians are in one region. The Jews are in one region. And of course, the Arabs also in one region. This is what is in the old, in the old city. But my Bible tells me that as we are all going to be redeemed, in the new Jerusalem city, which will come down from, home, from heaven, there will be no quarters because every human being that will be redeemed will be but a son or daughter of the living God. There will be no segregation. There will be no color bar. There will be no section for the Americans or the whites. There will be no sections for the blacks. There will be no sections for the Indian. There will be no section for the Muslims. And there will be no section for the Jews. Everyone that will be redeemed will have been redeemed because they believed in the blood of Jesus and they will have been washed 
in the blood of Jesus. We'll all be but children of God, living together in unity. And remember, if you visit our cemeteries today, that's the only time when it doesn't matter who is your neighbor. You don't care who is buried next to you because you don't even know. The next time when you don't care who is your neighbor is when you are a baby. Babies are born and they are put in the cribs. The next one may be white or black, they don't care. And Bible says we should be like little children. We should come to the point where we realize that there is no Bemba, there is no Tonga, there is no Lamba, there is no Lala. In the kingdom of God, we are but one people. And we'll speak but one heavenly language. And that will be the difference, and that's the difference between the present Jerusalem and the Jew Jerusalem that is coming. Notice what the Bible says. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16 says, Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. This city is already prepared for us. And God is not ashamed to call us his brethren. He is not ashamed to call us his children. He is not ashamed to call us as belonging to him, for he has prepared a city for us. And in fact, Hebrews says he has prepared a city whose foundation is much better than these foundations that are here. He has prepared a city whose builder and maker is God. For Abraham was looking forward to that city whose builder and maker is God. And that's the city you and I ought to be looking forward to. Notice another difference between this, this city and the other city. The Bible says, the city lies four square, Revelation 21 verse 16, and the length is as large as the breadth, and they measure the city, and the, with the reed, it was 12,000 furlongs. That is 1,500 miles, which is about 375 miles long on one side, 375 miles on the other, 375 miles on the other, and 375. It's a perfect square. 375 miles, which is about 600 kilometers. You start from Lusaka. You drive the whole day going to Chipata. 600 kilometers. And then from there you take another side. Go 600 kilometers. It is a perfect 600 kilometers square. My brother, it is a big city. In fact, the worry of some people is, will that city be large enough to accommodate the people? Of all the people that will be saved? The specialists tell us that if each person was given only a hundred square feet, for accommodation. That city is big enough to accommodate 39 billion people. Our population is just appro uh, 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 approaching 6 billion. But now you are talking about 39 billion people. It is a big city. And Jesus has measured out measurements correctly. Each one has a mention. In this city, we find people that are crowded. People are crowded. There are very small portions. And as you can see, the people that are getting in through that lion's gate, uh, there is commotion inside, and people are so crowded. But in the holy city, the new Jerusalem city that is coming, each one will have a mansion, and there will be space enough for each individual. That's what the Bible says. Again, the Bible says it has a new name, and the new name will be the new Jerusalem city. Revelation chapter 12, verse 2. What about the walls? Now, this city has big walls. There are few places where you can find walls as high as this. But in the new Jerusalem, listen to what the Bible says. Revelation 21, verse 17, and he measured the wall thereof, a hundred and forty-four cubits, which is about 216 feet high. 
and that's nearly 20 stories high. 20 stories high. That is a large wall. If you talk about 13 stories, you can see. But when you talk about 20 stories high, that is large. And those are the walls to the new city. Maybe you may be asking yourself, but why do we need walls? What are the walls for in the new, new Jerusalem city? Those are simply ornaments. They are for decorations because there will be no enemy that will try to strike and enter into the new Jerusalem city. We'll all be living at perfect. We'll be all in perfect unity. There will be no insurrection in the new Jerusalem city. Nobody will call for a rebellion and there will be no enemy that will be attacking the new Jerusalem because we'll be redeemed. And once we are redeemed from this earth, we'll be redeemed finally and totally and forever. What a beautiful thought and a beautiful experience. In this new Jerusalem, in this old Jerusalem, you find beggars. There are so many beggars around the streets. Almost on any city gate you find, you'll find somebody asking for shekels. A dollar, please, please. Shekel, please. But in the new Jerusalem, there will be no beggars. Everyone will be equal. Everyone will be rich. And in the new Jerusalem, there will be no quarters for the rich and shanty compounds. Because everyone that will be redeemed will all live together. And our homes will be exactly the same. But there will be mansions. And each one will be perfectly satisfied. This old city, there is sickness. There is pain and death. But my Bible says in Revelation 21, in the new Jerusalem city, God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. There will be nobody that will be weeping in the, old, in the new Jerusalem city. We are all going to be happy and we'll all be satisfied. Now listen to this. It says, the new Jerusalem city has, and the wall of the city has 12 foundations garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third Chalcedony, the fourth an Emerald, the fifth Sardonyx, the sixth Sedius, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Topaz, the tenth Chrysoporus, and the eleventh Jacinth, the twelfth an Amethyst, beautiful stones, twelve foundations to the new Jerusalem city. This city, we can only talk about the destructions that have gone on because there is war after war. And the, 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 the Jerusalem that we can now see is built on top of the rubbles of the so many destructions that have happened. But the new Jerusalem city that is coming, it rests on 12 foundations. And the, the stones thereof are pure as crystal, beautiful, clear, and clean. It is a place for you and I to desire to go. It is a place for each one of us to be happy about. Our Lord tells us that I'm coming very soon. And when he comes again, we'll be looking forward to entering the new Jerusalem city. The Revelation 22 verse 2 says, In the midst of the streets, on either side there is a river. And the tree of life, which bear twelve manner of fruits, and yields her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22, verse 2. In this said Jerusalem, that phenomenon is not there. There is no river that passes through this city. There is no tree that produces twelve manner of fruits. Every month, a different kind of fruit. And being productive every year. But in the new Jerusalem, we are all going to enjoy the fruits that will become from that tree of life. And that tree of life, the Bible says, the leaves thereof are for the healing of the nations. Some people are too short, some are too thin, some are too fat, some are too tall, some are sick. But the Bible says, as we are going to, to be eating of the tree of life, the leaves are going to be for the healing of the nations. Does that mean we are going to be sick? Not at all. 
It means we'll never be sick at all. It means we'll always be joyful. We'll always be in, in joy. And we'll have the fellowship not only of our brothers and sisters that we have lost, not only the friends that are scattered around the world, but we'll be living in fellowship with the holy angels and the saints of long ago. And more so, Jesus Christ himself. Abraham was looking forward to this new city. Abraham was looking forward to the city which were made were not made by human hands. And I am looking forward to that city. My brother, my sisters, I can describe and try to describe the new Jerusalem city. But Paul says, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, I has not seen no ear heard, neither heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. We can describe and we can compare to the beauties of the cities in this world. But my Bible says, I has not seen, no ear heard, nor can the mind comprehend the things that God has gone to prepare for us. This city may look beautiful. It may have a special dome. It may have special streets. It may have some special gates. But the New Jerusalem is far much more glorious. Nobody can describe. Paul cannot describe. Paul had a glimpse of the, the New Jerusalem city. And the only thing he could say was, I has not seen no ear heard, neither has it entered into man. No man can even comprehend the things that God has gone to prepare for his people. My brother and my sister, I am looking forward to the time when we are going to enter into that new Jerusalem, when all the tears will be wiped away from our eyes, when we are going to rejoice and be rich, never more to be poor. To enter that new Jerusalem will be an experience you need to be looking forward to. Is that your desire? To enter into a new Jerusalem? That's my desire. If that's your desire, will you pray with me? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for what you are willing to prepare for us and what you have gone to prepare for those that love your appearing. Father, we love your appearing. We would like to be found in the number that will be redeemed. Help us, Lord, for this is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm looking for a city with a true foundation, a home in the heavens, no by hands. Its designer and builder is the Lord of the ages. He prepared it for me before the world began. I'm looking for a city with a true foundation, a home in the heavens, no by hands. Its designer and builder is the Lord of the ages. He prepared it for me before the well began. Since the moment oh, you better be a stranger in this land and make the Lord promise living in this world but with my new friends of faith I'm looking for the day and I'll be gone from this land and home with the Lord. I'm looking for the city with a true foundation a home in the heaven is known me by hands. His designer and builder is the Lord of the ages. He prepared it for me before the world began. What I can touch and feel is not as real as the world that exists beyond what I can see. My inheritance lies and love never dies and life everlasting is reality. I'm looking for the city with a true foundation, a home in the heavens, not made by hands. His designer and builder is the Lord of the ages. He prepared it for me before the world began. I'm looking for the city with a true foundation, a home in the heavens, not made by hands. His designer and builder is the Lord of the ages. He prepared it for me.
before the well began. Brothers and sisters, as we come now to the end of this program, I would like to remind you that all these messages are available on tape. You can call or write the addresses and the telephone numbers are appearing on your screen. Please call us and tell us if this program is of benefit to you. We want to know from you. We want to share the joys and want to know what you think. We would all want our programs to be of benefit to the entire society. Let me remind you this. The Bible says in Revelation 3 verse 20, in answer to the question, how can I be assured of a place in the new kingdom? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Jesus is saying, if you hear my voice today, don't harden your heart. I will come in. He's willing to come in. Just open your door. Let him come into your heart. Let him change everything that happens in your life. Until next week, may God bless you. And good night. We'll read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. It's truth in God's word he has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Beautiful heaven, my